right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego, sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Matthew Pollard, who is over in North Carolina. But I think by his accent, you will see by way of Australia. How are you doing, Matthew? I'm doing terrific, mate. You know what they say, Australians travel almost as much as the Irish. <laughs> yes, I always sort of say, explain to people that the Irish are, there's a kind of a gypsy, we're kind of a gypsy race in some ways, like we're always traveling, always moving. And, you know, Ireland has, um, you know, we, we, we've never, in, we're one of the few countries in Europe, we've, or the only country in Europe, actually, we've never invaded, never colonized anywhere, anywhere else with an army. Mind you, we do arrive with backpacks and kind of take over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Half of Sydney has been taken over by the Irish most of the time. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, you let one in with the backpack and before you know it, all their friends are there. Great. So um, what we're going to talk about today is introverts and selling, both networking and sales. You've written the two books behind you there, The Introvert's Edge to Networking and The Introvert's Edge to, to Sales. So first of all, Matthew, why is intro, introversion so uh, so interesting to you? Well, because I'm an introvert myself. And, you know, it's interesting. So, I mean, my backstory is, you know, I had no business being in sales. I, you know, lost my job just before Christmas. And, you know, for those people that don't know much about Australia, everything's backwards, but summer and Christmas happen at the same time. And what that meant is I couldn't get a job anywhere else. And I was a really introverted kid. I had a reading speed of a sixth grader, actually, because of a disability. Actually, because it's video, you know, I got diagnosed with this syndrome where basically I put on this pair of glasses and miraculously I can learn to read. It's a colored set of lenses, but not like everyone else. I could just start the process of learning to read. But there I was out of work, struggling with reading. Really, you know, my confidence was beaten up. And then I ended up, the only jobs I could get were commission only sales. And that was terrifying for me. But door after door, I just, you know, after five days of product, Product training and not a single second of sales training, I should say. I got thrown on this road called Sydney Road and literally I got rejected, I got sworn at, I got told to get a real job. That was always my favorite. But in the 93rd door, I made my first sale and I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to do this again tomorrow and the next day. I mean, I made $70, but that was a horrific day. And I actually taught myself how to sell watching YouTube videos after taking it believing that sales was a system and something that I could plan and prepare so that I didn't have to rely on having this gift of gab that you, you know introverts clearly just do not have. So for me, what was interesting is, you know, since then, you know, I, I, I became the number one salesperson in that company, got promoted a bunch of times. Fast forward a decade, I've been responsible for five multi-million dollar success stories. Mm -hmm. And I started talking about what I call the three steps to rapid growth, why you've got to differentiate, why you have to niche and creating a sales system. But before I talked about sales, I told my own personal story. And while people kept coming up saying, Matt, you know, your content was great. What they'd always say is, you know, as an introvert myself, I had no idea that I could sell. So I started reaching out to every sales influencer I knew saying somebody, i.e. not me, should write a book on introverted selling. And I mean, I had a reading speed of a sixth grade, the last thing I wanted to do. But yeah. everyone kept saying, Matt, no one's going to buy a book on introverted sales. And I went, you know what? I understand niche marketing. There's no one in this marketplace. And I said, you know what? I want to write this book. And it was like just happenstance at the time that I'd started working with a ghostwriter as a client. As he was a client of mine. Right. And, you know, we blew his business up from making no money to like, you know, literally $120,000 in like three months. And then the next year he made just shy of 300000 And he was like, we've got to put these ideas into a book. So, I mean, we put it out there and I think it exploded because in truth, you know, while, you know, Susan Cain's book was amazing and it really empowered introverts to believe that we could, you know, it's, it's great to be a writer or be a coder or, and don't feel bad, but there's a whole load of introverts out there that want to be amazing leaders. They want to be amazing salespeople. They want to network. They want to run their own businesses. And they always thought that they could only accept subpar performance of themselves. And yeah. because of that, they didn't try. But what's funny is a lot of the people in sales leadership are introverted too. They just gravitated to a system. Zig Ziglar was an introvert. Introvert. You know, mm -hmm. Jeb Blunt is an introvert and it was just, it was crazy to me. We had this belief that people can't sell as introverts yet all, a lot of the most successful people happen to be introverted. And I think that's what really created this <laughs> a boiling pot of interest that, I mean, that's why this book exploded. I mean, it sold 45,000 mm -hmm. copies in just a couple of years. 
Yeah, no, which is fantastic. And I do, I do agree with you. And I think that's, uh, and I think there are still some enduring myths out there about sales and about, as you said, about the type of person who can be sales. And, and the other part too is, and you'll probably attest to this too, we always look on things, um, you know, very, very black and white in many ways, right? We say you're either an introvert or you're an extrovert, right? But, but that's not true. You can be an introverted extrovert. You can be an extroverted introvert. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, nuances to it all. And I think that's what's prevented often introverts from going into sales because they just believe that it's an extrovert's game. That's it, period. Absolutely. And I think, you know, what the problem with it as well is that when people do get successful, as even, for instance, myself as an introvert, when people see me on video, I often get the, come on, Matt, you can't be an introvert. You're really mm. articulate on, you know, on, on podcasts and on stage. And I'm like, that's right, because introverts are just supposed to hide under a bridge and yeah. not really talk to anyone, right? The thing is that even when I sometimes see someone amazing from stage, I go, oh my gosh, I wish I was like them, you know? I mean, even though, you know, Global Gurus list me as the number three sales professional in the world and I'm listed on all these top 10 speaker charts, I still see someone explosive from stage and say, I wish I was like them. And I assume that they're extroverted, you know, and I'm constantly being blown away to find out later that they're actually introverted. They just, you know, they practice, they plan, they prepared. And I think that this is important, you know, because a lot of introverts, they say, and I, I you know, I hear this all the time, you know, I used to be introverted, but I'm now extroverted. And I'm like, you can't change. Yeah. What happens is we get better at systems. For instance, I love networking now. I love sales. I love speaking from stage, but like a kid at Disneyland, I enjoy the rides, but afterwards I'm tired. An extrovert will do those activities and be charged. So what yeah. I will tell people all the time is that yes, introversion and extroversion is a spectrum. However, if you want a really simple way of identifying that you're an introvert, it's if you do those extra so-called extroverted arenas and you're tired afterwards you're an introvert it doesn't mean you can't do them it doesn't mean and you know people call themselves ambiverts these days which to me it's i've learned the skills to be sex successful at so-called extroverted arenas in my mind they're not extroverted arenas at all introverts can outsell out network out lead their extroverted counterparts why because we focus on process and process and system and introverts are always better at system and process and system and process will always beat somebody that's just winging things. The problem is that an extrovert can wing things from day one. So we see them today and go, oh, they're better than me. But day after day, if we focus on a system, I mean, we'll beat them hands down. Yeah, and I love that you brought that up because I think in in, in sales, you know, it's a sales system, a sales process and following. The, the research is out there. I mean, ZS Associates have done it, uh, McKinsey have done it. They've shown that top performing organizations are process oriented. The top performing sales organizations are process oriented. And, and I, I agree completely. And I think, I think you're right. I think it's when it's when a sales organization or a sales team, when it doesn't have a good process, when it doesn't follow a system, sure, the, the loudest and most gregarious are going to probably look like the best. But the reality, as you said, is when you put process in place and you follow it rigorously, then you see the more shall we say, um, uh, you know, the introvert who takes a more uh, systematic approach, shall we say, to it will win in the end. I f firmly believe that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's really interesting because, you know, a lot of people believe extroverts to be the best at it, but extroverts have their own burdens to bear. Firstly, knowing that system and process win over the long term they still will be introduced they'll get a process introduced to them and they'll still gravitate to trying to wing it because they love the fact that they can so their natural advantage at the beginning is actually an achilles heel long term also some might say that introverts sorry extroverts aren't the best listeners they're not they're, they're perhaps not the most empathetic but here's the thing that's very very different if you see an extrovert and you notice they're not great at processes you get them coaching if you notice that they're not the most empathetic, you might send them to emotional intelligence classes. If you notice they're not listening well, you might suggest a book on active listening. However, if you notice, and this happens all the time, if you notice that a sales performer is introverted, you'll just go, poor little Johnny or poor little Sarah, she can't because she's introverted. And that's what kills me. 
HR sales leadership, they have a responsibility to help these people realize A, that they can, and then provide them a process to show them how. It's our inability to recognize that our team, we have introverted team members that won't just resonate with an extrovert that says, it's easy, you just do this. It's not easy for us. So we need a systematic process. And more than that, the reason why a systematic process is so important is for an introvert, we take rejection so personally we'll beat ourselves up about it tomorrow i mean whether we're networking or whether we're selling mm -hmm. it's always going we're going to feel rejection but if we make the process external and we create it as a system well then our scientific mind starts to play and we start to tinker with the system but when we get a rejection we go oh what part of the system didn't work for me as opposed to oh my gosh i'm not supposed to be in sales everybody hates me life is terrible and that's what introverts have to get out of so process and system also allow you to view sales as external view networking as external and just focus on improving the system. And to me, that's powerful. And you know, I've seen extroverts as well, when they're selling a widget, they don't take it personally. The first time they've got to sell themselves, all of a sudden the gift of gab goes straight through the floor because <laughs> now they can't not take it personally. And that's why a system is so important. Yeah, no, and it's really interesting. And I think sometimes it's 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 also a byproduct of the market that you're selling in. Because if you take before the financial crash, you know, when everything was, you know, through the roof and budgets were huge, people were spending tons of money, it was quite easy in many ways to sell. And I had many conversations with sales leaders after that were going, you know, my sales team used to be fantastic and now that looks like they can't sell. And this is after the crash, and they're going, well, maybe they couldn't in the first place. Because into your point, but your point is when it's an easy market, ex extroverts th thrive. They thrive in that because it's all, yeah, yeah, yeah. And people, and they're not doing their due diligence. When it comes to, when it gets a little tougher, that's when you want, that's when the introverts really come through because they go through the process, they go through the questioning, they go through the listening and they kind of leave the, uh, you know, the wingers behind. Well, there's actually some really other big benefits there as well. So firstly, introverts foster deeper relationships. Mm -hmm. So when things get tough, they tend to retain their customers more effectively, which is super powerful. But you think about an extrovert's ability to sell. It's completely based on their mood. So we hit a tough time or forget that they have a fight with their husband or wife. That day of sales is going to be horrific. It's mm -hmm. that's why we experience these roller coaster rides of sales with extroverts. I remember when I was first learning how to sell, I had a, a team teammate of mine who was like an amazing extroverted natural gift of gab salesperson he started making extraordinary money so he bought himself an amazing vehicle but that had a pretty high payment plan and i remember him being so stressed about the vehicle it affected his ability to sell he ended up selling the vehicle because it was too much on his mind now mm. if you think that you can have something as ridiculous as that plague your brain of course, introverts have got an example. Rain, hail, or shine, we follow the system, we follow the process, and we get drastically better at it and quickly. You know, without it, we're kind of terrible at sales. But one of the things that I find is, you know, introverts don't gravitate to things like bulldog processes, hard closing. We need a more step by step natural process, one that tends to leverage the power of story. And also, when we're talking about networking, we need something that decommoditizes ourselves, that comes from a point of passion and authenticity, not, mm -hmm. we don't want to walk up to people and say, I am functional skill, where people are, oh, I don't need that, or, oh, I need that, how much do you cost? And then we come across feeling like, oh, I need you as a client because I'm dying to buy a Bentley. It just doesn't work for us. We have to understand our passion and mission in life. We have to understand the stories that we, we can hinge to that express our value while coming across as educational and inspirational, but not like we open up this fire hose of jargon, which is what most introverts do if they don't use stories to educate. And so understanding a system that works for introverts is really, really powerful because that's the thing. And I will say there's, there's lots of systems out there. Remember Jeb Blunt, you know, Zig Ziglar was an introvert. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul Smith was, is an introvert. There's so many introverted mentors out there that have created systems. But what I would tell you is anyone that's listening, that's an introvert, it's like, okay, I understand the power of system. I'm going to do that. Remember that sales is not like martial arts. Networking is not like martial arts. By the way, Ivan Meisner, the founder of B and I, the world's largest networking group in the world, also an introvert. But networking and sales, public speaking is not like martial arts. It's not better to learn multiple systems and piece them together. 
find one and follow the Henry Ford approach, right? When he started, he said, you can have any color vehicle you want as long as it's black, because he didn't want any bells and whistles mm -hmm. until he got the solid process done. And then over time, he then started to introduce some of those bells and whistles. Do the same with sales. Find one system that you can find step, follow step by step, and then focus on getting that right, and then start to add in the bells and whistles later. Yeah, no, and it's, it's a good analogy. As a martial artist, that's a pretty good analogy in many ways. But I also think that unless you have a lot of time to devote to your martial arts, you also probably should just settle on one and being good at one and maybe, you know, <laughs> dabble in the others because there's so much to learn within each of them. But I love it. But I think it's a great it's a great analogy, though, because, yes, I think find something that works for you and really become good at it. But I just wanted to come back briefly uh, to something that you mentioned earlier about introverts and deeper relationships, because I think coming out of this pandemic, this is where the introverts are going to really, really make hay because I think people, and I think this started pre-pandemic, but people are looking for more authenticity, more empathy, more relationship, um, more connection. And it doesn't have to be face-to-face. -face. It can be, it can be virtual as well. And I think that's where the introverts can really uh, come to the fore as we climb out of that because they have the right skill set and, and the right kind of, they, they project the right things that people are kind of looking for now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, firstly, I mean, empathy is everything in this current situation, mm -hmm. active listening, but planning and preparation is everything. You know, I, yeah. it's the amount of times that an extroverted sales person will get a phone call with me and they start by saying, so tell me a little bit about your business. And I say, well, okay, well, after checking out my LinkedIn profile and my website, what questions yeah. do you have, you have? And they're like, oh, no, no, I haven't checked that yet. I'm yeah. like, okay, so you're coming into this call unprepared, where I would like to say, you know, I'm so glad we can get on a call and then say, now, of course, I've had a chance to look at your website and your LinkedIn profile. It looks like you're doing some pretty amazing things. But what I'd like to do is take a step back, hear a little bit more about you, what you're struggling with, and how I can be the most help to you in the time we have together today, and then do something else that introverts are much better at stop talking and listen to hear what they have to say and then get ready to tell a story so the great thing about this kind of pandemic sales world now is that people have scheduled 30 minute calls they don't want to be stuck on the phone building small talk for 30 minutes yep. they want to get straight to the point but they want to know that you understand them so if you don't come prepared and you don't show that you understand them before you start they're annoyed now because all those resources are available online so yes the fact that you an introvert will check out a website to start to think about what to say is hugely powerful the fact mm -hmm. that they do come across as they genuinely care and that they listen will absolutely work and the fact is these days people like to work with people that dot their i's and cross their t's because everyone's working so fast and so quickly in this technology space that they're worried that if they're talking to a fast, smooth talker, that perhaps things will go wrong. And they now can't call that person in their office or that person's, you know, in another country and it's too hard. So because of that, conscientiousness is actually coming back into the forefront of something that's truly important. And if we don't recognize it, we won't buy. Yeah, no, and beautifully said, Matthew. And I think that the trust element is huge in there as well, because that's it. Obviously, people people want to trust the people they're working with. Um, they don't want to make mistakes. And I think that's the other part of, if we can just to close on. I think the other part that introverts can be very good at is reassuring people because, you know, you love maybe you love working with the gregarious, outgoing extrovert says because it's a lot of fun. But there comes a point towards the end, as you said, when all the details and maybe the implementation part afterwards where suddenly they tend to often disappear into the sunset and you're sort of going, well, that was interesting. You were my best buddy and now I can't really find you. Um, I think the, the introvert has some advantages there too. Yeah, absolutely they do. I mean, one of the things that I talk about, and I do a keynote about this called Build Your Story Playbook, and I talk about the power of story and how people remember up to 22 times more information, how it activates the reticular activating system of the brain, which allows us to create artificial rapport that we can build into real rapport, and how it short circuits the logical brain and the emotional brain just goes story time and listens, assumes all the detail is fact. And because of that, you know, really just resonates with the moral of the story. And if the moral of the story is, you know, we held their hand through the whole process, we were there for them, we got them to the amazing outcome that they're looking for people hear that but then at the end as soon as the contract signed if you run out the door tomorrow they're like did i make the right decision maybe i should cancel an introvert's much more likely to go oh we're friends now okay great let's let's build that relationship for a little bit just remind them that i'm going to be holding their hand remind them of the story dot the i's cross the t's make sure that person thinks 
I'm in a safe place now. Where an extrovert's like, bang, oh, I'm late for an appointment, gotta go. And again, that's not following the system because a good system makes sure that you cover specific points. Whenever I talk to someone and they've you know, given me their credit card details over the phone, you know, I'll make a joke, you know, if it's my online academy, you know, one of the jokes I make with people at this stage is, you know, I hope you enjoyed today's call because at this point you kind of stuck with me for life and people are, huh, relief then goes over them that I'm going to be there. And then I go through all the things they're going to receive to make them feel comfortable. Now, if I don't do that, then the number of emails I get tomorrow going, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. Maybe I've made the wrong decision. Could it go haywire? And this is why you find, especially with extroverts, a lot of times the admin time is spent reassuring clients for hours because they didn't yep. spend a few minutes saying some planned remarks. And a lot of times they're like, oh, but I said a bunch of stuff. But the stuff they talked about was about sporting teams, about hobbies, about you know what they're doing on the weekend, not reassuring the client that they have their needs understood and they've got what their requirements are completely under control. Yeah, no, I love that, Matthew, because sometimes they put it the, the other way around, you know, and think that, uh, you know, you can do all of that stuff afterwards once the once the, the prospect or client uh, actually trusts you and you're, and you're delivering on it, then you can do the other stuff. But um, this has been fantastic, uh, Matthew. So all of Matthew's information is going to be below this video, including links to his books. But before we go, Matthew, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, obviously my main main work is helping introverted service providers obtain rapid growth within their business, but I do a bunch of keynotes helping, you know, corporate sales teams use story in a much in a, in a really operationalized uh, in a really easy way to operationalize because what I find is a lot of storytelling structures are really bulky and what I focus on is creating a simple system that focuses on the emotive driven sale to allow people to really see the value in what people provide. But you know, a lot of times people are like, oh, where do I find out copies of your book? I always, my publisher hates me when I say this, but I always say to people, you don't need to buy my books. You know, at the first, at theintrovertsedge.com, you can download the first chapter of my first book, The Introvert's Edge on Sales. And literally I provide the full seven step outline of that process that I was telling you about. If you do nothing more than grab that seven step, put what you currently say under that, and then firstly, you'll realize there's some things that don't fit, throw that out, you shouldn't be saying that to customers. Then you realize there's some things out of order and then there's some gaping holes, usually around asking great questions and telling great stories. And sure, you think you tell great stories, but you likely don't. And then if you do that, you'll double your sales easily in the next 60 days. And then, I mean, obviously, if you go to the same link, you can download the first chapter of The Introvert's Edge to networking as well. And it, you know that will help you overcome your beliefs that you can sell, that you can network, and then give you a detailed outline so you can start the process of firstly believing in yourself, but then systemizing the process. Yeah, listen, fantastic. I really would encourage. I think this is the, uh, to be honest, I think the era of the introvert is upon us when it comes to sales, um, particularly because selling has got a little bit more complex and there's a lot, um, you know, product services have got more complex. So I think it's a wonderful time. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Matthew. This has been fantastic. And I really encourage people to go check out the books. Uh, John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. Thanks again, Matthew. And thank you all for watching and listening. Yeah.